So Patrick, let's just start with the whole Co Young relationship. How you initially started working with them and what that experience was like, and then we'll go on to how you developed the different uh, machines in the line. It started about six years ago um, here at Matrix and coming over from LED manufacturing and then a whole different electronics world, basically. Um, it was pretty, pretty, pretty clear early on that getting to automation and using optics uh, and overcoming the visual requirements that go if you don't have these certain things in place, um, having a full, uh, a full meeting with with Panasonic and 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 Co Young and everybody in a room, and basically writing out a vision. Um, I'm not saying they didn't think I was crazy right away because I think they thought I was crazy right away um, because coming into the in industry not really knowing everything about the industry, it was I just wanted to use industrial management techniques and see what we we're going to get out of this. And so it's really taken us down a path that I'm ex really excited about the future, not just the future for Matrix, the future for this industry and what's going to happen. And is that is that a strategy of how do I get maximum amount of data out the line and how do I utilize that to, to improve the process? What's the, what's the kind of core industrial thinking behind that? Um, so analytics, 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 uh, make and break everything to include your margin control and all of the pricing and everything else that you have to. And then basically understanding what, what a per square foot you can push through a building and effectively do it. Um, so once we rearranged the building to where I felt um, we finally have our flows correctly and we really started doing the pulls, it was pretty apparent that the optics, optics have to keep up. The Panasonics have to keep up. Um, all of our go, no, go checks, all that had to keep up. The testing had to keep up. And so the one thing we knew we couldn't do is take every PCB board and go through a visual inspection to look for exceptions. We just, you cannot do that and think you're going to keep up at the pace that we need to run it. Um, and so that was our, my number one focus was, you know, at the back of the line, you would take everything off. You just go and no go everything out of your, 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 basically your post inspection and then visual everything and then redo it all again. None of that made any sense to me, especially coming out of the Toyota production system background and working there, you just don't touch things twice. You just, that nothing's good come back. Um, and so I put a lot of pressure on Ko Young to say, hey, we're gonna make these calls and I wanna call before the post. Oh, by the way, we're also gonna go put pre's on everything because we're doing the, the whole, you know, the industry standard, the industry standard you're only gonna get 20% productivity and, and so many parts per hour. I didn't really buy into that, I thought, that seemed like the, a really good way everybody says, okay, just go away, Pat. Yeah. Right? And, and I, I didn't believe in that. And so I said, okay, so if we're placing at 8, 12, 14% place time on these machines, how hard is it to really get to 24%? And we're not an OEM, so we're doing 10, 12 changeovers a day. Things are spinning, things are moving. It comes down to rotation checks, all those things that you do. Because you can, you can set up a pit crew and go. It's really knowing that if you go, you're not going to have a lot of issues. So basically that's where the pre came from because we're, we're spinning it at such a pace that inspecting every operator to do everything all the time exactly correctly, I think that's kind of whistling through the graveyard. Yeah. And so that's where really that pre came from. And I said, okay, so if we have the pre under control. That means we're not sending anything down the ovens. I can wipe a board, move on, very cost effective. Um, and then turn around and do something to make sure that we make all our calls before it travels through the final go, no go. And then I can take all of those steps out of there. And after all of that, we're in a position now, we are the first ones in the industry to do this now. We are literally making that call before it goes to the final inspection. Yeah. And we've, we are really, really excited about this. We're also one of the first ones in the industry to now reduce one person making all the calls across all of our equipment. Um, and so we're basically setting up a war room there's going to be one person making that. Uh, a couple of uh, people, technicians, highly skilled technicians that are going to have headsets on, and they're just going to go take care of our problems. And we're not going to have people sitting at the EOI. And we, we, I think we've joked before, so they just don't buy chairs. Stop buying chairs. You can't buy chairs and put people at AOIs because that's not what the machine does. The human eye can't do it anyway. So you might as well get your optics dialed in. Yeah. No, it's fascinating, and what you're doing is taking that fresh approach where you don't have the legacy in EMS so you're actually thinking about it in a new way and you're actually coming up with radical solutions but when you look at those layers you've got those analytics 
um, as part of that. That gives you an incredible amount of traceability as well. You know, you can you can take a recall or you can take an issue and you can you can get back to first principles and root cause, but you can also narrow down the number of boards that might have been impacted by that specific issue. That must be really important when you look at traceability in particular industries and with particular um, registrations and certifications. Yeah, one of the really good things about the optics that we're using and be able to get to that data is knowing when something went off the rails and not doing having to go back further than you need to go. So you can do it purely off of data and where we started doing the false calls and, and, the, and the good calls. And so now you're, you've limited your scope of what you're chasing because the entire industry is based off of a, a fairly decent margin, right? I mean, and you have to maintain that margin to pay people and insurance and keep up with everything else that's going on. Um, so basically, if you can limit the amount of to touches for rework and what you're really trying to find out what the root cause was, that you, you, you just alleviate a lot of extra work and you yeah. can have people still continue to build things and move the business forward. Yeah. And one of the big challenges that everybody's seeing at the moment is talent. So the idea that you're going to have one person running, I don't know, what is it, 12 machines or so here, that, that's a significant talent issue. But that's part of an overall automation strategy that's part of the strategy of the business how do you grow this facility without without or in terms of revenue without growing necessarily the number of people here because you're not in an area where there are thousands of people knocking at your door looking for jobs um, correct and so we have to maximize the the skill sets we have here and then we need to continue to educate them now we're very blessed to have multi-generational people um, so if we get somebody to stay past that 90-day mark and where we really start to invest back into them, um, that's kind of a, a, a really solid business strategy here. Now, it's, it's not limitless. Uh, and so um, we have gone down automation for six years now, um, everywhere from the front of the lines to uh, how we perform on the line and what steps people are going to do and what they're not going to do. Um, and then because industry for years, not even here, it's like, okay, we'll train everybody everything. Yeah, I don't know if that really works. I mean, it's, it's a great concept, and if people can take it all in, um, I don't think you've become really good at everything. It, and you need some experts to do certain things. I mean, you run an SMT line, basically you're taking, a, you're taking an operator that would comparably a CNC five axis type person, but their option is they get to run it lights out when they walk away. I don't get to run lights out. So those are things that you really got to take an effect of how much automation you really need to do. And so um, nothing, nothing is off the table here in when it comes to automation because I need to take the same people I have here and knowing I'm only going to replace general, general relation, new generation coming along, um, I've got to make sure that, that I get everything out of that I possibly can and that they feel fulfilled as, as they're doing something good here for us and um, they want to be part of this, part of our profit sharing, all the rest of that we do here. Yeah, and that comes back to the equipment as well. The equipment's got to be easy to operate, easy to easy to use, and low maintenance. Um, but it's also got to be networked, so multiple machines can be run by a, a small number of people. That's something that Co Young seems to do very well with the K Smart technology. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're very pleased in being part of their development team and part of that strategy. Um, and that I think that is going to be clearly limit us and what, or how are you going to use that and if you're going to use it across uh, multiple companies as well. Um, and so that really standardizes um, basically your class three, your class two, your class. What does that really mean in the place? Because from place to place, that's a different a philosophy, a different strategy. And when it's different and you're presenting that to, to customers now, because customers now have now consolidated and they're in multi multiple facilities for us, that's, that's come problematic, right? So let's make a class three call, a class three call, and then we all use that same standard. Yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? And you said five years of, of commitment to automation. I'm guessing in that five years, headcount has grown. It hasn't gone the other way. No, we have flatlined our headcount. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's less people in here because we, like I said, we're multi-generational. There's a lot of retirees and people that went to school in this building. If you know, one knows anything about Matrix, we're in a school building. Um, and so there's been a lot of the, the baby boomer effect has happened. Um, and it's happening everywhere in the world. Um, and so you have to overcome that if you're not going to be able to pull in enough people and then get them up to speed quickly. So we, we are down our overall headcount. Um, but I will tell you the group of people in here are much they're much differently skilled than what we had in the past, not, not bad or good. 
um, they have become expert in certain things for us, right? We're, um, and so that, and you don't have the luxury to have people any longer just to, okay, hey, we're going to spend two, three years developing somebody. You have to go now. And, and um, basically with a lot of the mom and pops, you know, our belief is they're closing down across the world. And um, so you're going to have to run at the speed of business. And part of that is um, getting the getting the talent that you have and maximizing that talent without basically burning everybody into the ground because yeah. you can't do that either. And so you, we need these people here for a long time. And, and, and I'm extremely blessed with the, the, the talents pool that's here. They're really smart people. Yeah, and then within that five years with, with either a flatlined or a slightly smaller uh, number of people, you've been able to grow sales quite substantially and grow revenue through the factory. Correct. Yeah, it's, uh, and we don't see any stop to that either. And so um, basically for us to have done what we've done in the same square footage, um, I'm extremely impressed with that. I, mean, I think that was, that was a lot of work by a lot of really smart people in this building to, to make all that happen. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. And you see Ko Young as very much a, a partner in, in, those, in those strategies and your, if you like, your roadmap very much aligned with those in, with theirs in terms of technology. You're influencing their roadmap, and they're and they're able to support support you in your roadmap. That's that's been extremely important to me. Is that I don't really go into to vendor relationships without it being a partnership. I will not do it. I mean, uh, if you're going to have me take machine one or two, and I'm going to go out on a limb for you, you're going to be right there, and we're going to fail together, or we're going to succeed together. Yeah because I will not do it on my own. That's, that's crazy. I mean, and even if you fail together to begin with, you're going to succeed together eventually because you're, you're, you're troubleshooting. Yes, and, and that's been really, really nice to see uh, Co. Young and even Panasonic, right? Those, that partnership that they have, to be able to pull both parties into a room and go, hey, this is our next step. I, really, I need you guys on board. Yeah. And for them to say, yes, they're going to do it. And, and they don't even like shake their heads anymore and say yes right if they okay that's what pat's going to do that's the direction we're going to go yeah. yeah and it's great for them as well because if you know if you're going in that that direction there's every chance that that the industry is going to going to either follow or has, has got some of the same issues that they're dealing with you're all dealing with talent issues you're all dealing with component shortages the 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 problems of the industry are the problems of the industry right and any anybody that i talk to and all of my peers it's exactly the same problems. Um, and so being able, being, being able to take out the steps of the extra handling and all the other stuff and make the calls when you need to make the calls on the line, being able to use no-go go spreaders, dividers all the way through the line, keeps the line moving, keeps things spinning. And um, that in itself has been really, really exciting to be part of. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's interesting, Patrick, that you do come from a background where, you, where you've looked at things differently and, and that's that's created some impressive results so i think that's really great thanks so much for your time great to talk to you again and we'll chat again soon thank you thank you